I wanted to just talk about, uh, you know, preparing your sellers. Like when you are on your listing appointment, um, it's different, you totally. know, than six months ago, right? You know, all I needed to do six months ago, sign here, and I got 30 <laughs> offers already at the front door. <laughs> well, things are different right now. So uh, one of the things, you know, is that days on market. And so one of the uh, one of the strategies I've started to implement is really leveraging the coming soon status. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to really, you know, test that market, uh, test the, you know, the, the list price of the home, uh, the interest and, and so forth. And obviously every day a house stays on the market as active as a day it's accruing, mm -hmm. you know, days on market. So I'm using the coming soon status to test the market on, uh, market on the price and get people's feedback on the home because, of course, it doesn't accrue days on market. Mm -hmm. And you have 30 days. To, to right. have a home in the, in the MLS is coming soon before, and I need just want to make sure everybody understands, before it automatically goes active. Goes active so, you, right. so you need to know it. Yeah. So during this coming soon uh, period of time for me is I'm treating the property as active. So I'm allowing showings. Uh, I'm a lot, I'm, we're doing open houses. And nothing is different other than that coming soon status. We have that conversation with our sellers just to say this is what we're doing because – we want to get an idea of price. We want to know, are we priced right? Are we priced too low? Are we priced too high? Whatever the case is. And so with that, you got to make sure, though, you put the put this note in the private remarks. Let other agents know that even though it's listed as coming soon, you are allowing showings. Yeah, I think that's the biggest <clears throat> pardon me, misnomer is the fact that people think because it's coming soon, you can't show it. <laughs> you, well, you can't show anything if you don't pick up a phone, call and see if it's available. So call and have that conversation with the agent. Look to Mike's point in the, in the notes. Uh, and do you put those in the, in the remark? Private, remark, private, private remarks. Private remarks yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that's good. I, I have one other question though for you, Mike, is that when you put this into the coming soon, are you also doing open houses during that same period yeah, of time? Yeah. So, so, so still doing all open of houses. that research, that marketing, because marketing is actually the study of sales, not, not mm -hmm. advertising or selling. Um, so you're still doing all those things, ramping up within that period uh, mm -hmm. so that you can, you can, now have a consistent approach to compare one listing to the next one yeah. as you're moving forward. Yeah, and you know, and it lets us know if we're not getting any activity, uh, then we got to take a look at price. Because right now, pricing a home is is, is, challenge, is right. challenging. And so this is allowing me, and we're not riding out the 30 days. We're generally doing this for, for two weeks because if I can go through a whole week and I go through a week and I've got no activity at all, then I have to have that conversation with my seller that it could be a price thing or it could be a condition of the home thing. But I like what you said. You said you had a the prior conversation with mm -hmm. the seller so they understood the value of what you're trying to accomplish in that period. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's real important. All right. So number two is focus on curb appeal. Old is new again, Todd. <laughs> remember, Funny how that works. Remember, right? remember when curb appeal was a critical component, <laughs> I right? I do, yeah. Uh, you know, the last couple of years didn't really matter what the house yeah. looked like. Had uh, a door and a roof. And you were good. <laughs> you were pretty good. <laughs> so this is an old trick uh, yeah. that I used, I mean, way back in the day when curb appeal was is really important is uh, because – you know, there's one thing sitting down and, you know, across the table with a seller and telling them that their baby's ugly as opposed to actually showing them that their yeah. baby's ugly and let them come to that the, their conclusion. own conclusion. Love so it. one of the tricks that we, we do is say, OK, let's get in the car. We're going to drive around the block. I want you to pretend that you've never seen this home. You're a prospective buyer. We're going to pull up to the front of the house. What do you see? What do you see around you? What do the other houses look like? What does the front of the house look like? Is it attractive? Is it got a bunch of weeds? Is it got a bunch of dead shrubbery? Because buyers have options. And then we, and then literally we get them out of the car and treat them like a buyer. We're going to walk into that house because first Love impressions it. are everything. When I open up that door and you walk in, what do you see? Because people will unfortunately they make up their mind sometimes too in, fast. In, in the first 30 seconds yeah. if i walk into your home and i get a bad feeling it's harder to overcome so i you know so take notice of what you see when we pull up and what do you see when we enter the home because these are the things that we might have to put some money into yeah i think most of those things mike are called 
sales techniques. <laughs> and it's something that possibly, you know, we've we've forgotten to teach new realtors, um, certainly if they haven't been through one of these markets before and seen a 7% interest rate or seen a property that takes 70 days on market to get a contract. I mean, they're so used to seven hours, you know, they, yeah. they, they really don't understand. Uh, but to your point on this one, uh, I remember having clients in my car and we would drive into a community and we would drive up to that house and they would say, Todd, we don't even want to get out. Yeah. And I say, what are you talking about? You know, how do you know what the, ins it doesn't matter. We don't like what we've seen so far. And so that could be anything from the community to, you know, to, to the front yard, obviously, is the grass green? Is it, have you, have they elected not to overseed for the winter? I mean, you know, what are they doing for marketing or advertising, selling the exterior of their home to get people to the front door? And then when you get to that front door and you open it to your eloquent point, you know, what are they now seeing? And, and what are they you, smelling? Yeah. All the senses, mm -hmm. all five of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's a problem. You know, I, I have this one. I, you know, getting across the cellars will sometimes drive me crazy. But you walk up and the and the door, the lock is loose. Oh, I know. The <laughs> handle? Yeah, the whole door. Uh, yeah, and you're like, yeah. okay, we're, we're already we're already starting off on the wrong foot. Yep. All right. Well, so, so just one last thing. And a lot of times the condition of the exterior of the home is a precursor to the, what your home inspector is going to find during the escrow period, you know. Yeah, you know, and, and then looking at the walls. Yeah. Uh, does it need paint? Yeah. Because in this market, you might have to be painting. Does it are, are or flooring or clutter? Is a clutter, clutter everywhere? You know, I mean, yeah. we're having to go back to having sellers box up stuff that they don't need and stick it in the garage or get a. You know, I used to have. I might have to get one. Yeah, I used to have unit. a storage unit. I remember. That my, I remember my, you doing that. Yeah, my sellers would have to. My sellers would get to use. All right. Third thing is be, be clear on the process and the expectations. This is so important, especially when you're during, you're having that listing presentation. You have to be very, very clear and explain what is going on in the market and what they can expect. That's why your numbers are so important. These are what you can expect for days on market. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing coming soon for two weeks. This is why we're doing that. But th this is what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. You have to understand there's what 22,000 active homes, just over 5,000 people. These are the numbers I'm paying attention to, yeah. what you're saying yeah. each week and, and communicating this. 5,000 people in escrow. Okay, this this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important while well, taking care of curb appeal, why that is so important and so forth. Um, and 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 I would contend this people are saying, well, if a house isn't selling, it's not priced right. I would contend that a little bit. Yeah, me too. A home can be priced right, but sit on the market for a while because, again, there's more options. There's more choices out there. And we're now back to finding that right buyer. And then, of course, know your process and explain your marketing and communication strategies. You know, what? when are you going to communicate with them? You know, you, I, you know, for me, every Monday, I got to call my sellers who we didn't get any contracts for the weekend and have these conversations and, and just kind of explaining your specific process if you don't have one get one. get one talk to some listing successful listing agents and learn what their what their communication what their process is in dealing with sellers so so here's here's part of the problem that i've always had with a uh with an information package or a presentation kit that you would hand out to consumers is that a lot of times agents are in there stipulating times days on markets different types of things but they're saying it in a manner to the consumer that this is what you can you can expect the problem is you can never expect that <laughs> you always have to expect the unexpected when you're a real People right now are having to, agents are having to now go uh, back to the drawing board and everything that they knew in the last two and a half years is not, is not working right now. Mm -hmm. And so what they're having a problem with is, well, they've only been a realtor for five or eight or nine years and they got into real estate right when the market started to get good again, which meant all of us that have been here a little longer were in it when it was just like it is today. And so sometimes people just really aren't clear themselves as realtors on you know, what is their responsibility and their duties. But I love when you put your client in the car to take them around the neighborhood to show them their competition. I think that's a, a brilliant idea. I remember when you and I used to do that decades ago. <laughs> Well, a while back <laughs> in a previous market, <clears throat> but uh, to really just to to if you don't tell people what you're about to do and what's going to happen and, and set the stage for them coming to the realization you're a professional and you're able to navigate today's market. 
um, then I don't think you got as much as you think you have. Yeah, and, and one of the things that uh, my partner, Ryan Curtis, used to do, I'm sure we're going to be back into doing it now, but he would actually then take the clients and actually go take a look at other homes in the neighborhood. Yep. Uh, set up, you know, now we have showing time, look at for the vacant ones and and say, okay, you think your home is worth this. Let's go take a look at a, a true home that's worth 480, yeah. you know, look at the upgrades and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Definitely. And that's, I think, another reason why those price comparisons, those little price ranges in the market set sometimes help out, too. All right. So this is our three pack preparing your sellers for the market. All right. We